All right, let's get stoked for Stokes' theorem. In particular today, let's calculate the surface integral of the curl of f, where f is the vector field xz, y squared, xy, and s is the part of the paraboloid z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared above the xy plane, oriented upwards. So first let's draw a picture of this surface. As I said, what it looks like is just a paraboloid. So think 1 minus x squared. So it might look something like that. And with the upward orientation, meaning that the normal vectors face upwards. Now, there's two ways of evaluating this. The silly way would be to first calculate the curl of f and then evaluate the surface integral of that. But man, that's way too much work. Luckily, there's a theorem that allows us to simplify this tremendously called Stokes' theorem. And without further ado, here it is. All it says is that in order to calculate the surface integral of the curl of f, dot at the s, so think double integral of a derivative, all you have to do is just calculate the line integral of f over the boundary of this surface. And the boundary curve in this case is this curve here. So literally, instead of calculating a surface integral of a curl, all you need to do is calculate the line integral of the original vector field, which usually it's way easier to do, especially if you're like me and you forgot how to calculate surface integrals. Now, as I said, let's first figure out the boundary curve. And how do you figure this out? Well, remember we said s was the paraboloid, z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared, but above the xy plane, which has equation z equals 0. So just set 1 minus x squared minus y squared equal to 0. And see what we get. So 1 minus x squared minus y squared equals 0. So x squared plus y squared equals 1. So c is actually the uh, unit circle, you know, x squared plus y squared equals 1, in the xy plane. Now, the question is, how do we parametrize c? So let's see how to parametrize c, because we need that for uh, our line integral. And here you have to be very careful because the orientations need to match. Namely, we know already that S is oriented upwards and now for C we have two choices. Is it clockwise or is it counterclockwise? Well, and as I said, make sure the orientations match and the way you can check for this is simply as follows. If you're a person walking on this curve, make sure that when you're walking, your surface, which you can think of a mountain, is to the left. And in, and in particular, here's a nice mnemonic, it's always walk, L, and left. So here, for instance, which orientation for C do we use? Well, if we go counterclockwise, then in fact, the mountain is to your left. So on your left hand, whereas if you go counterclockwise, then you have a problem because then the mountain would be to your right. So in fact, now we just uh, choose the counterclockwise orientation for C. So the usual one, which is simply x of t equals cosine t, y of t equals sine of t and z of t, because it's in the plane z equals 0, z of t equals 0. And, of and you can actually check that, because if you go this way, your y coordinate becomes bigger and your x coordinate becomes smaller. So be careful, sometimes there are some tricky problems that fool you with this. All right, very good. And now that we parameterize c, 
Claro que si. We're almost done because now we can just use Stokes' theorem, which tells us again this horrible integral becomes much, much easier. So, again, what do we have? We have by Stokes' theorem the double integral of the curl, so the surface integral of the curl, equals to the usual integral where, uh, so f, the line integral of f dr, where again f was a vector field, let's see, xz, y squared, and xy. And remember, c was parameterized just as follows, x of t equals cosine t, y of t equals sine of t, and then z of t equals zero. And again, t from 0 to 2 pi. So how do you calculate a line integral? Remember, it's the integral from 0 to 2 pi of f of r of t. So just f, but you plug in x of t, y of t, z of t, and dot it with the derivative. So x prime, y prime, z prime, dt. And so let's calculate this. This becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Again, x of t becomes cosine t, z of t becomes 0, so again that's your xz, and then y squared becomes sine squared of t, that's your y squared, and then xy just becomes cosine t, sine of t. That's x, y, and you dot it with the derivative of that. So you dot it with cosine prime, which is minus sine. So again, think x prime, and then sine prime, which is cosine, y prime, and lastly, 0 prime, which is 0. So that's z prime, dt. And now this looks like a huge mess, but the nice thing is when you dot those things, so again, if you dot uh, those two vectors, you actually get a bunch of zeros. So in fact, what you get, this simplifies tremendously. This becomes simply integral from 0 to 2 pi, 0 times something, so just 0, sine squared of t times cosine t. plus cosine t sine t times 0, plus 0 dt. And so in the end, all you need to do is just evaluate sine squared times cosine. And you're left with integral from 0 to t, sine squared of t, cosine of t, dt. And again, an antiderivative is just 1 third sine cubed of 3 t from 0 to 2 pi, but if you evaluate this both at 0 and 2 pi, you get 0. So in the end, the value of the surface integral of the curl is simply 0, which is very neat.